Hi, I'm Sean Carlock. Welcome to Send It 11. Today we're on location at the Send It Bar and Grill where truly all you need is one shot if it's a good one. Okay, today I'd like to talk to you about backups. And in the next three episodes, 11, 12, and 13, we're going to talk about backups for different areas. I believe in the military adage of two is one and one is none. I want to have some kind of backup for my system. This is long range hunting. This isn't, hey, I forgot my pocket knife and Brother Bill's got one down the ridge that I can go borrow. We are very equipment intensive as a sport and we have to have backups, especially for stuff that has batteries. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about our ability to find distance. Almost everyone is running a laser rangefinder these days, as they should be. Now, this is the G7 BR2 rangefinder from Gunworks. I like this thing and I use it a lot. One of the things I like about it, and it's just a little feature, is that inside the case here, there's a couple spare batteries. There's our first backup. Carry spare batteries. I cannot count the number of times I've had friends or been with clients or been with people out in a hunting situation and their rangefinder's dead and I have to dig out a spare battery for them because they don't have any. So have battery backups for your rangefinder. But let's say that our rangefinder goes down completely. What are we to do then? We need to have some mechanical or some other kind of electronic backup for that system. I tend to like a mechanical backup as opposed to another electronic backup because sometimes it's a condition. Maybe it's 10 or 15 below and electronic stuff just is not working well. Now you can put a hand warmer on it, you can warm them up, there's things you can do to get that system back online again. But my first thing for ranging, if my laser rangefinder goes down, is to have a reticle backup. Now, as you'll see here, we show a reticle backup as a way to measure an animal. Now this is fairly accurate given that you know the size of the target you're trying to range and that you have the basic math skill and formula to run it. With minutes of angle, very easy to do the math in your head. Mills, a little more difficult but still very accurate and easy enough to do. Here's how we do it. Okay. Even though we could dedicate an entire segment on how to range with a reticle, we're just going to go over this real quickly. Reticle ranging is quite easy and fairly accurate depending on how particular you are. If you take the target size in inches, divide it by the minutes, and this is one of the reasons we use minutes is because it makes this easy, that equals the hundreds of yards in distance. So we're going to look at this small buck, small to medium buck here. We're going to say he's 16 inches through the chest instead of say 18 or 20 like a large buck. We're going to divide that by the 2.5 minutes you see in the reticle. And that gives us 6.4 or 640 yards. Pretty accurate. Actual distance here was 622. My next step, and I don't use this one very often because it can be a little temperamental, I like to use a GPS. And I use the GPS for several things. A lot of times I use it in recovery basically using the same method. But I can take the pointer, pull up the GPS, get my location of course, and then take the pointer and drive it across the topo maps that I have loaded on there over to where the animal is. Now if we straight across the canyon, we're looking for the same contour line that we're on. We can use the topo map to see whether we're on a ridge, down in a valley, on a knob, whatever it might be, and you can accurately locate it here in the mountains. If you're out on flat ground, that's a little different story. If you're hunting agricultural ground, stuff like that, this isn't going to work too well for you. But up in the mountains, it works fairly well out to a certain distance and it will give you the yardage as you run the arrow out there right at the top of the screen and it's fairly quick. Now the last thing is a range card. When I went to sniper school we did the standard range card look just like this and we were taught to estimate different distances put them in the arc and lay out this range card from a final firing position. 
These are handy and I still use them today on certain hunts, especially places I haven't been before. I'll usually have one laminated and folded in half in my backpack and a Sharpie pen in there, a fine one. I can write on the lamination and wipe it off later and the ink on the photo doesn't run. So I can lay out a range card when I get there and then the next day I'm in there and it's a little foggy, it's a little rainy, and my laser rangefinder gives me 22 yards no matter what I do, I still have a range card that I can work from. Now, if it's a place that I hunt often, if it's one of my favorite spots, I usually have a range card that looks like this. This is a photo from Google Earth. You save the picture, you get it into Microsoft Paint or some kind of other editing program, and you can put dots and yardages to all the places where you know there's trails, ridges, places where you've seen the animals before. If there's a wallow down there, places you see them. If there's that one little finger ridge that the elk come out of the heavy timber and cross down into the open feeding areas in the evenings, well, I'm going to have a couple spots of yardage on that ridge that I can look at, I'm going to have the angles written down at the bottom. I can put additional information down there, average temperature, average pressure, so that if my kestrel goes down, and we'll get into that in a different episode, then I've got some information to work with. I'll take this photo and I'll laminate it. I'll put it in my pack. And if I'm going to a place that I hunt often, I always have that in there as a backup in case there's some reason I can't range. And it usually isn't that my rangefinder goes down. The number of times I've had trouble with a rangefinder, 100% uh, of the time was conditions I couldn't range through, fog or rain. But nonetheless, if it doesn't give you yardage, it doesn't give you yardage. You have to have a plan to compensate for that. So these are just little tips to backups for your systems. Practice them. They're like anything else. It can be a perishable skill with a mechanical backup. And you have to know what your limitations are. Go out and find a target. Put targets out, get plates out there, use your reticle to estimate the range, use these different methods and see how effective you are. It's very unlikely that you'll be as effective with them to the distance you are with your laser rangefinder, but if you go out and practice, you'll know what your limit is, and that's the goal, to make good, clean shots a high, high percentage of the time. I'm on him. Send it. Drilled him. He's down. Oh. Yeah. He's hunched. He's hunched. Huh? He's hunched. He's going down. He's Whoa. down. He's rolled. He's kicking. Do I need to get back on him? No, he's dead right there behind that tree. Gotcha. Okay. Wow, this works pretty good, Sean. 20 power binoculars. 